Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we are going to be talking about some of the best portable water containers for preppers to keep around. But before we get too deep into that, if this is your first time by the channel, welcome. And if you've been by here before, welcome back. If you haven't done so already, if you wouldn't mind hitting those subscribe buttons, the notification bell, and also if any point during the video you enjoy the content, maybe you learned something new about maybe portable water storage or one of these containers specifically, go ahead and hit that like button as well. And some of you guys might be thinking, why do I need portable water storage containers? They're things like 55 gallon drums, stuff that allows me to store way more water than any of these things, and probably for a much lower cost per gallon, and that's a fair question. But having water containers such as these around does give you some advantages over those larger water containers. And the first is you can actually bug out with these. If there's a situation where you need to leave home, you can't take those huge 55 gallon drums or larger containers with you unless you're like the Incredible Hulk or something like that. I'm not, but something like these, you could just throw into the back of your car, put in a trailer, and then you can be out of town and you'll have some water with you. And also containers like these are great to have on hand if you like doing camping, if you're a hunter, or even if you're taking a road trip. Anytime that you travel, that's a good idea to have some water with you. And containers like this will allow you to do that. And another advantage that portable storage containers such as these have over the larger, more bulk options is that you can take these to the specific areas in your home that you need water. And if you have more than one, then you can stage different containers in different areas so you're not having to move stuff around all the time. And also, if there's a situation where things get bad enough where you have to go retrieve water from nearby sources, having something like this or this is gonna allow you to collect water, take it back home, and then run it through your filter and your purification process and do whatever you need to do to it. And the bottom line is some people just don't have space to keep those large containers and these might be your only option. So today we're gonna to talk about some of my favorite portable water storage containers and some also that I've just recently found out about and started using and share what I found out about them with you guys. So I hope you enjoy. So the first container that I wanna talk about with you guys today is the Reliance Aquatainer and it's kind of a staple in the preparedness and camping world. And a couple reasons for that is, first of all, this is one of the easiest containers to find at your local big box store or sporting goods store. They're pretty much everywhere. And the second reason why is these are just really easy to use. They come with everything that you're going to need to use them, either you know during camping or if it's in an emergency situation. Unlike a lot of containers, it comes with a spigot. For some things like water bricks, you have to pay extra for a spigot. This comes with one that can reverse and fit down inside of itself while it's being stored. And one thing I like to do when storing these containers is since the spigot is gonna be inside of here, I'll go ahead and I will cover that lid with something like a Ziploc bag that I've cut up to fit over it and I tape it in place. And that just prevents dust and other debris from getting inside of the spigot and making it all nasty so that I can just tear that tape off and then install the spigot and it should be clean and ready to use. And another thing that's nice about the Reliance Aquatainer is that up top there is a vent that has a screw on screw off cap. A lot of other water containers just have like a little plastic plug that you put inside of the vent and that's not going to be all that reliable. It's going to be really easy for dust and other debris to get down inside of there and contaminate your water. The Aquatainer is made of BPA-free plastic. It holds seven gallons and when full weighs 61.8 pounds, which is quite heavy. Now let's talk about some pros of this container. First of all, it's going to be pretty inexpensive. You can walk into most big box stores that sell sporting goods and you'll be able to find these for around somewhere between $15 and $17. Also, the capacity is pretty decent. Seven gallons is quite a bit of water to store, but it's not gonna be so much that most people won't be able to move it around. I also think that the fact that it has a store away spigot is a very nice feature, especially considering that a lot of containers like this do not have one of those. And the vent, like I said, 
that's great because it's not going to allow contaminants to get into your water. And another good thing about this container is that on the side it has graduations that'll show you exactly how much water you have left inside. Let's talk about some cons of this particular container. First off is it is very heavy. Since it holds seven gallons of water, weighs over 60 pounds, that's going to be outside of what some people are going to be able to carry. And on top of that, it's very awkward to carry. And the reason why is, if you look at how far away the edge of the container is from the handle of the container, then there's gonna, you're gonna be carrying it kind of like that, kind of chicken armed, and that isn't gonna be very easy. Even if you're in fairly decent shape, you might only be able to carry one at a time, which is an ideal, especially if you need to bug out quickly. And also, this container isn't nearly as durable as some others that are out there. I'm not even going to attempt a drop test because honestly, I know what would happen. It would probably blow up and it's not stackable. Another thing that kind of goes along with that lack of durability is it's not going to be strong enough where you can stack one container on top of the other. So you're going to need to rely on things like shelves if you were going to store large quantities of these. The next water container that I want to show y'all is something that I haven't really seen much in this type of video, and it is the Scepter Military Water Can. I think that if you want something that you can transport water from one place to another, or maybe go get water and bring it back to where you need it, that this is going to be your best bet, mainly just because it's so durable. This is the same exact water can that the United States military uses. They're out bouncing around on Humvees and armored vehicles. So I honestly think that if it can handle that sort of abuse, then it can handle pretty much anything we may need it for. Also be something good to maybe put in the back of your truck. Maybe you're doing some work out in the field and you need to take water with you. This should be able to stand up to that. It's made of very thick BPA-free plastic, holds around five gallons and weighs 47.6 pounds when full. And some pros of this water container is, like I said a second ago, it's very durable. It's gonna be very hard to break this thing. And also since the side of the container is so close to the handle, it's not gonna be as awkward to carry as something like the Aquatainer because your arm is gonna be closer to your body as you were carrying it. And also, this container will not let light into it, meaning that things like algae and stuff, they're not gonna be able to grow into this just because this plastic is so thick, it's colored, so that light isn't gonna be able to get into it. Now, there are some cons to this water container, and the first one is this thing doesn't come with a spigot. You will have to order it after market. And the next one is, you notice up top, there are two caps, okay? There is the pouring cap, and then there is also the vent cap, okay? Notice how both of those caps are gonna be where you are dispensing water from. And what that means is if you open the vent cap too soon, or if you open it too much, then water's gonna come shooting out of there also. So what you do is, is you turn the container on its side, you open up the pouring cap, let water flow out of there, and then once there starts to be suction buildup inside of the container, then you loosen the vent. And then another con of this, if you want to be able to really tighten down the huge main cap, then you're probably gonna need a special tool, a cap wrench, to get that on there really tight, and then also to remove it once you've really bared down on it. The next type of container that I wanted to show y'all were stackable containers like these water bricks, and then also the aqua bricks, which I'll talk about in a minute. But where these are really gonna shine is if you don't have much space to store water, you're gonna be able to stack these one on top of the other. You're gonna be able to slide them in places, maybe in corners or underneath things that other water containers just won't be able to fit. These are also going to be much lighter than other types of water containers, and that's largely because their capacity is smaller. These water bricks, they hold three and a half gallons each, and they weigh 30 pounds even. So the big pros of containers like this, other than lightweight and portability, is 
they're gonna be tougher than things like the Aquatainer. You're gonna be able to move them around. Maybe they'll be able to withstand a little bit more abuse, but I wouldn't go crazy with it. I don't think that, especially the water brick, is nearly as durable as something like the Scepter can that we looked at a minute ago. And another advantage that containers like these are gonna have over the others is that you're gonna be able to use these to store more than just water. They can store things like dried food, even ammunition, and they can also hold ice. Now with these, just like with any container, you don't want to fill them up too much, otherwise they could split out. But being able to hold ice in here means, I mean, that could be helpful for camping if you want to hold like, you know, just crushed ice in there. Or let's say you have maybe a freezer that's kind of halfway full. You can put water in this, allow it to freeze, and that'll help keep your freezer cooler longer should there be a power outage. And this type of container is also stackable. You can stack them one on top of the other. And if you have more than two, you can really make kind of like a tower, at least four high out of these. But this type of water container isn't perfect. And the big kind of disadvantage to them is they're gonna be pretty expensive. This whole setup with the two containers and the spigot cost around 60 bucks. Being three and a half gallons each, this holds seven gallons total. And so you're looking at $60 versus $16 to source seven gallons of water, this versus the Aquatainer. And then also one thing I really don't like is that you have to order the spigot separately. That's an extra around 14 bucks that quite frankly, I don't think you should have to spend if you're buying water containers like these. And the fact that they only hold three and a half gallons is a double-edged sword. Yes, it's lighter. People who might not be able to carry larger containers will be able to carry these, but it only holds three and a half gallons. That's really not all that much. Uh, that might last, you know, one person three days max. And then also some other disadvantages are with this water brick, the handle really does get in the way. And since it's removable, sometimes it can pop off and that's super annoying. It really gets in the way if you have a spigot attached to it. Notice I don't even have the handle on there because, well, I mean, it's kind of impossible to use, so you might as well just take it off. Meaning if you have a spigot attached to it, it's gonna be more difficult to move this container around than other types of containers. And then also the water brick is somewhat see-through, which means that light is entering the container where the water is, which could foster the growth of algae inside of the container over time. And the last big disadvantage of the water brick is the location of the mouth. It's a little bit taller than the other containers, which can make it challenging to fill, even if you're doing so in a bathtub. So a second ago, I mentioned that there was another product similar to the water brick, and that's called the Aqua Brick. And it offers some advantages over this, but it does cost a little bit more of this setup for the two containers and the spigot cost around 60 bucks. But for the same thing from Aqua Brick, it's gonna be 75. Now, I wasn't able to get a hold of any of those. They're on back order until the end of the month, but I can go over some ways that maybe they're a little bit different. And the first one is that those will only hold three gallons, whereas these hold three and a half. So that's kind of a disadvantage, but they are made of a thicker, more durable plastic than these. They'll be able to hold up to more abuse. And also they're not see-through like this, meaning light won't be able to go inside of them and foster the growth of algae and other gross things. The handles on the aqua brick are also molded into the plastic itself meaning that it's going to be easier to use than this little annoying thing here. And having two handles is just going to make it easier to control. And then the last big advantage that the aqua brick has over the water brick is the location of its spigot. It's more at the bottom of the container, whereas the spigot here on the water brick is more towards the middle. So you're going to have to tip this one up much sooner than you would the other and keep it tipped up so that water continues to flow out of it. The last water container that I want to show you all today is the Reliance Folda Carrier. And this is going to be your best option if you want something that you can store away, but you can get out and fill it up if you want some sort of last ditch water storage. And this is a good kind of alternative to maybe something like a water bob or an aquapod, which are those large bladders that you can put inside of your tub and fill up when you know trouble is on its way. And while you should always have plenty of like permanent water storage, there is a lot of value in being able to store a little bit more water in a decent container 
at the last minute. One of these folded carriers is going to be able to hold five gallons and when it's full it weighs around 45 pounds. So kind of getting into pros and cons of this particular water container, there is a lot of stuff that I like about them. First off, they're pretty inexpensive. This particular one I bought a week or two ago from a local sporting goods store, paid around nine bucks for it. Online, most of the time you'll pay somewhere between 12 and 15, just depending on where you're getting them from. And then also, as you can see, when not in use, this folds up very small. This could go very easily on the end of a shelf in your closet, takes up very little space until you need it, and this is what one looks like full. And then also compared to things like the water bob or aquapod, which go in your tub, these are actually reusable. I've had this particular one over here for well over 10 years. I got it in either 2007 or 2009, I can't remember which one, but me and some buddies went tent camping at Big Bend National Park and it held up well and it's been used in you know different storm situations a few times since and it's held up extremely well. It'll even hold up to freezing temperatures. When we went camping, I left this outside in 20 degree weather and the water inside was frozen like a brick. Everything thawed out and it was perfectly fine. But there are some cons to these and the first is probably the most obvious. They're not gonna be as durable as something like one of the military water cans, a water brick, or even the aquatainer, just because of the material that they're made out of. So you wanna be really careful when moving and transporting this. The handle holds up a lot better than you would think it would, but you still wanna exercise some care. And then another con of these is you are not gonna be able to store water in them long term. They'll do fine for just a weekend camp out, or maybe you need to keep water in them for a few days during an emergency but because of the material that they're made out of and the fact that they are clear, it's letting a lot of light in that could foster algae growth. These aren't things that you want to keep water in for months or years at a time. Well, that's all we got for today. Once again, thank you guys for stopping by. If you didn't do so earlier in the video, go ahead and hit those like, subscribe, and notification buttons if you don't mind. And also before you go, feel free to check out my store below. I got some shirts and then also I got a new mug which says don't panic, just prep on it. And any support that you could give the channel is always greatly appreciated. So have a good and thanks again.